What's up guys, welcome back, and in this video I'd like to extract our code to multiple components. We'll also explore how to communicate between them. In the last video we completed our to-do app, but everything is just in one big component. So let's go ahead and clean everything up. So I'm going to make a new components folder, so all our components can go into there. That's actually what view does by default. So you can see here, there's a components folder in our view project. So let's go ahead and do that. Make a new one called components. And let's put our app.js in there. And now that's not going to work because we have to change some of our imports. So this one, go up one. And this logo as well. And we have to change our entry point too. So this will be components. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's start extracting out components. I'm going to start with this one right here since it's probably the easiest. Let's make a new file. Let's call it to do's remaining. And let's quickly scaffold this out. I have a package that allows you to do this quickly. So I just type in RCC, press tab, and it populates everything you need for a React component. So if you're curious as to which one that is, I think it's called React.js snippets or something. Yeah, this one, React.js code snippets. As you can see, it has all these snippets which are very handy. You can see it's very popular as well. So definitely make use of that. And let me just hard code this in for now. Two items left. And let's get this working. So where's this items left? Let me just comment this out. And let me put that to do. To do is remaining. Um, pro tip: If you're, if you use VS Code to autocomplete it, so I'm going to press Tab here, and I'm going to close it. VS Code is smart enough to import that for us, so that's pretty handy. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, so that's hard coded now, so that's not going to work anymore. But we have extracted to a component. So let's go ahead and pass data into that component so it can continue to work. So to pass props in React, it's pretty similar to how you do it in Vue. So let's just pass in a prop called remaining. And we're just going to pass in that function that we have. So this dot remaining. And then in our component, we can just reference it like this, this.props.remaining, and everything should work. Let's see if this works. There you go, still works. So when you have components that only render out HTML and render out props it, that's passed to it, then it's probably a good idea to not make it a full component but to make it what's called a stateless functional component. So let me show you what I mean. Let me just comment this out. It's pretty much the same thing, but like I said, it's more lightweight, and if, you're, if you don't have any custom functions, then it's probably a good idea to use it. So there's another snippet in here called React. Here, stateless component. Yeah, this is the one. And it's, it's almost the same, it's just not importing component because we don't need that. And the definition is a bit different. But we're going to do the same thing here, and this should still work. Actually, we have to pass in the props here. And we reference the props using that coming in. 
so that should work and see if it works okay still works but now we're using the state stateless functional components so let me just get rid of this we don't need this anymore so another thing I want to point out is validating props that are passed in so in view you actually have to do that you have to you don't have to validate them but you have to at least define them um, so where is our to do so this is the component the same component we just extracted out and you can see we are defining the props that are passed in and what we expect from them now you don't have to do this as you can see our app still works but it's a good idea and can definitely reduce bugs when you're in development so in react there is a separate library to do this called prop types so let's go ahead and install that so npm install prop types okay that's done let's go ahead and use it so import prop types from prop types and to use it we can do it like this to do is remaining dot prop types equals and we can specify each of the props that are passed in and we can specify the type so prop types this in this case it should be a number and you can also specify if it's required so is required so take a look at the documentation and you can see all the types that are expected and what you can do to validate them so yeah we'll be doing that for the rest of the components that we extract so for example if I didn't pass it in let me just open dev tools here let's make this a bit bigger uh, yeah if I didn't pass it in you'll see an error in the console sorry a warning you'll get cool okay let's continue extracting components so the next one I want to do is this to do item which is probably the most involved one that we'll be extracting out so let's go ahead and make a new one to do item dot js let's make it a react stateless component with props and let me just hard code something in here and let's see if we can just render that out using that new component so let me get rid of this because I'm gonna make use of comments so we need that map let's see where this ends okay I'm just gonna comment this out for now and we'll just render out that, that component so to do item press tab so it imports it and we can close it yep it's imported cool and let's see if that renders out two hellos or two testings yep okay so we have this warning that we need to have a key so let's go ahead and start with that I'm gonna put this on its own line so key equals to do ID see if that warning is gone okay so what else do we need to pass in here so we took care of the key what else did we pass in from here um, we needed these two items we needed the to do and we needed the index so we can pass those in as well so to do is to do and index is index So now I'm going to take all of this and paste it into our stateless component. See if we can render it out properly. To do item, paste this in. Okay, so now this is not going to work because we have to change all of these references and all of the references to index 
to the props that are coming in. So instead of to do dot, let's grab all of these. It's going to be props dot to do. And for all the indexes. it's going to be props.index and I think I missed a few here okay see if this works so we also need to import this class names so let's go ahead and grab that grab this put it up here and now this should work cool so if I check it, it's not going to work because this is not defined. And as well as the, all the other methods, they're not defined as well. So how do we fix that? So all we have to do is pass these methods down. Right now they live in the parent component, so they live in app.js. And we just have to pass them down as props to that component. So let's go ahead and do that for all the methods. So check to do is this dot check to do and the next one is done edit. It's just this dot done edit. We also need cancel edit. That's just this cancel edit. And one more delete to do equals this dot delete to do. Again, they still live in this component because it needs access to the state. We will possibly take a look at how to do state management in a future video. But yeah, they still live here because they need access to that state. But we're just passing them down as props so child components can reference them. So now this should work. Actually, no, we have to define, we have to reference props instead of this dot. So we have all of these, we have to change to props dot. And now this should work. So if I check it, yep, it works. That still works. Let's try um, editing. Uh, something happened. Did I make an error somewhere? Yes, I forgot to do edit to do. Edit to do. Let's try that again. Take over world now. Okay, that still works. Cool. Awesome. So we no longer need this. And our main component is looking much more clean. We can delete this as well. So let's go ahead and validate those prop types quickly as well. So right here. So let's start with the to do. That is an object, and all of these are required. So I'm going to put is required for all of them. Now you can be much more specific with an object. You can use what's called a shape, and so so it, ver it verifies that you're passing in the correct object. But I am not going to do that. I'm okay with just verifying that it's an object index is a number and the rest are just functions so I'll do one and then I'll edit in the rest of them so it's a func function is a reserved keyword so you have to use func Let's check out the documentation and I'll do the rest for the rest of the methods okay see if it still works and it does cool. Okay, let's quickly do the rest of the components. So the next one I want to do is this check all. So 
going to make a new one called to do's check all and it's going to be a react stateless component with props and let me just see how that looks in our parent component so check all I'm going to grab this just comment this out just go to our component just paste it in here so we need to pass in two props we need to pass in this any remaining function and this check all to do's so this is going to be props let's verify them right now actually so it's a prop types dot func sorry dot func is required and check all to do's is the same and all we have to do in our component is use that component so to do's check all and we're going to pass in any remaining to be this any remaining and then we'll pass in check all to do's this dot check all to do's cool let me close that see if that's the works and it does cool now let's do the filter part let me just remove this so right here I'm going to grab this I'm going to make a new component so to do's filtered .js rscp and I'm going to paste that in here and let's fix this so what are we passing in here we need this filter and we need this update filter function so let's go ahead and verify those so update filter prop types dot func is required filter prop types dot string dot is required and let's just update these to props and let's use that so to do's filtered and I'm going to pass in update filter this update filter and filter filter is this dot state dot filter and see if that still works again I need class names so I don't need it here anymore because I'm extracting it to components so I'm going to take it out from there I'm going to put it in here okay so props it's not it's no longer props.state.filter it's just props.filter so I don't need dot state okay see if this works let me add a few so these two and let's filter them okay it still works awesome and let's extract to one more component the clear completed component let's make a new one to do's clear completed RSCP. Let me grab, where is it? Clear, completed. 
sorry, it's not in there, it's in here. Clear, completed. So let me just grab this. And we don't need this anymore. Oops. Here, paste that in. Let's verify that prop. So clear completed prop types dot func dot is required. Let's change this to props. Let's go back in here. Let's use that. So to do's clear completed. Clear completed equals this clear completed. Let's close that. And see if it still works. Remove these two and clear completed and it works cool. So there you have it guys, we've cleaned up our main component here and we've extracted some of the logic out to other components. Actually it's not really logic because all the logic still lives in this component but we extracted to stateless functional components so our code is a bit cleaner. We also looked at how to pass props between components so they can communicate with one another. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.